Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on Flosstube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. This is briefing number 87. I've written it down. I've had to put it underneath the camera. And it's the 28th of August, which in the UK is a bank holiday weekend. Well, it certainly is in England and Wales. I'm not sure about Scotland and Ireland, but it certainly is in England and Wales. So we've got a bank holiday weekend this weekend. Um, it's lovely to be back with you. You're gonna need a brew for this one, I think. Um, I've got a lot, a lot, lot, lot to share with you today. So I think you're gonna probably need a brew for this one. Thank you so much for all of your comments and your um, entries to the giveaway, which I'll do the winners of in a bit. I've got another giveaway to do this week. And thank you to everyone who commented on the treat box. Um, I had a lovely comment, actually I had a voice note comment from Yasmin, from Yasmin's Made With Love, telling me about the long crisps, the one that I described as hair curlers. Now, I'll read you what it says on the card, and then I'll let you know what she said. Now, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce this. Um, no, I'm not gonna. It said, that, it said that they were strawberry flavored corn puffs. I didn't get the strawberry at all. Um, that do not have any gluten or sugar, lightly sweet in flavour and soft in texture, these corn puffs are a healthy delight. Well, Yasmin left me a voice note telling me that they're actually a baby food. Um, they give them to very, very young children, a bit like we would use a rusk. And because they're not, they're not overly sugared, um, they, they can hold them and then we'll sort of, um, yeah, just kind of like, like a baby would do with a rusk. Um, use copious amounts of saliva in order to try and digest it. So I wouldn't have said I got the strawberry flavour from them, um, but I can tell you that in the absence of a cracker, they are pretty nice dipped in dairy. <laughs> so yeah, and they are, I found them especially nice when the packet had been open a couple of days as well, because I'm a bit of a weirdo. Crisps like that, corn puffs, um, cheesy puffs, uh, smoky bacon, frazzles, things like that. I always prefer them as slightly stale. <laughs> They've got slightly soft. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for those. Um, I, uh, I had a message back from the company and they said, oh, thanks for the review. Um, and I, I think they said they were gonna send me another box soon. So I don't know when. We might have another box to, to try out at some point in the future. So that would be fun. Right, I have got no whips to show you today. I've got no whips because I finished them all, yay! I have finished everything that I've touched this week. Um, and if you've seen my Instagram, you'll probably know a couple of them. I've also got one other FFO um, to show you. So I'm gonna start with those. So my first finish, and I'm gonna start with this one, is the Santa, the second Santa in the series. Now I didn't mention where these came from last week and all week I've been asking answering questions about where these come from. I hadn't said it because I'd said it several times in previous videos and I, I just thought everyone would would know but obviously folks don't get the chance to, to watch videos consecutively and things like that. So these Santas are in the November December 2011 edition of Just Cross Stitch magazine. If you are lucky enough to be able to find the actual magazine, then great. But the easiest thing to do is to probably to look out for the CD-ROM, which covers 2011 to 2015, all of the issues, not the, this is not the Christmas special CD-ROM or anything like that, it's just the normal one. I'll put a picture up here so you know what it is you're looking out for, okay? Um, and they were all in the November, December issue. It was one issue, so. When you get it you'll be able to find it now i as i said i've been doing this this chap here with the meersham pipe and what i didn't realize was in the instructions the one to do the instructions to do with the back stitch there is a mistake um because it talks about the back stitch instructions for the meersham pipe santa which is the one that i've been doing and then it goes on to give you the back stitch instructions for the santa with the quill which is that one. Um, 
and then underneath the one that's got the Santa with the quill it gives you those very much similar instructions again um, so it doesn't mention the pipe at all so I pretty much just followed what I'd done in the previous one um, and follow the instructions you know the faces are all the same instructions and things like that one thing I will say to you is if you are kitting this up and you're buying all the DMC's just look in the um, look at the DMC's in the backstitch list as well because there's a couple of DMC's that are in the backstitch list that aren't in the main list so where is he here he is and there he is, all finished. Stitched on 28 count material that I hand dyed myself. The reason I chose 28 count was so that it would fit into the frame that I've chosen for them. And it's a really nice stitch on 28 count actually. The, the stitches sit really nicely. Now, instead of doing knots or single stitches, I decided to bead him so that he's got his snow as a bead, those beads. And I used invisible thread you can see the back there the back looks horrendous but it's one of those ones where you're always catching little single um, stitches and traveling so it was never going to look brilliant um, so I used invisible thread just so that it wouldn't show through where I'd placed the the beads and I think he's absolutely gorgeous now I will show him next to the other one just because there's a lot of work in these two and people seem to absolutely love them so there they are somebody asked me about how I start these off um, and these ones because I'm trying to make sure that I um, use my fabric effectively so I had a fat quarter which I cut into four after I dyed it I have been starting in the middle of these because I need them to sit in the middle of the fabric um, because they're still not going to completely fill the um, the apertures of the frame you are still going to see some of the fabric so I do need them to sit completely in the middle of the frame so I have been starting in the middle with those so I've got two more left to go and I'm really super keen to make sure that I get them finished for Christmas because I really would like to display them this year. Now the other thing that I finished was something that I only had a small start on last week and it stitched up really really quickly actually because um, these welcome by the drawn thread some of them have got a lot of specialty stitches on and some of them haven't this one didn't this one just had mostly cross stitch and a little bit of satin stitch and that was it so it was really super quick so there we have it's not helpful welcome autumn it's stitched on 30 count lambs wool antique lambs wool um, which is the called for using dinky dies and you use one strand of dinky dies over two threads and you get really really good coverage on it because it is a silk it's a little bit um a little bit plumper than a than a normal cotton and then now as always with these a couple of the things that i've done are in the wrong colors for example my acorns should have been in the same color as the basket I read it wrong, I stitched them in yellow. <laughs> I'm quite happy with them in yellow. So yeah, I'm gonna get a frame sorted for that one because I can actually display that one because we're coming into autumn. So that was my second finish. Now my other two finishes, you may not have um, been able to guess the second the, the fourth finish, the thing I'll show you last, you won't have been able to guess because I haven't shown it to you. It was a, what they call a start and finish. So this one I finished. So this is from a company on Etsy called The Stitching Owl. And I stitched it on a piece of 36 count blueberry 
by Fox and Rabbit, which was part of their, um, oh, what do you call it, Fabric of the Month, part of their Fabric of the Month. So whether it will become part of their range, I don't know. But it's quite, um, obviously quite a, a mottled linen. So I picked probably a lighter section. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into um, a little bag, a little hanging bag for Halloween. That's what I think I'm going to do with it. And actually use this bit of fabric as the back. So I used sulky threads in four different colours, so black, white, um, a yellow or an orange and a grey. It's a bit more orangey on the pattern, I chose a slightly paler yellow. But I'm really happy with it, it looks super cool. Really, really good for Halloween. Ness is so excited about Halloween at the minute. We, I bought her a Halloween costume um, a couple of days ago because last year we were last minute Charlies and there wasn't very much um, around. She suddenly decided last year that she wanted a different costume to the one that she had. And she'd had the previous one from last year. But um, she decided she wanted something different and we were a bit last minute trying to trying to get it sorted. So, And I've bought a few little decorations for Halloween too. So she's worn her Halloween costume for the last two days and now can't understand that she's got like two months to wait until Halloween. But I can't blame her because I'm pretty much the same. <laughs> so there we go. There's that one. And along the lines of Halloween as well, something that I showed you as a, a purchase last week were the Satsuma Street 2022 ornaments so I picked this one and I stitched it let me put it on a piece of paper so this is a piece of black perforated paper and I stitched it with similar colours to the called for. I've still got a pouch of the colours that I used for a couple of um, ones from a previous edition. They seem to go and use similar colours so I just went with with that and then I picked up, I had the sequins and the beads, it's, it's beaded on the bottom, I don't know if you can see that well, um, and then it's got the bugle beads as sort of the sprinkles on top of the ice cream there. So it's really cool. I really, really like it. Um, and I want to try and get, I can probably fit another one on this paper. If I'd have been a bit more sensible about it, I'd have placed that one better. But So there we go. So yeah, that was my four finishes this week. I've finished everything I've stitched on this week. So I'm pretty happy with that. Right. My FFO. This is my FFO. Now, I've had this stitch for quite a while and you will have seen it if you've been with me for any length of time, you'll have seen it. Um, but I suppose about four or five weeks ago on eBay came the perfect sized frame for it. Um, and it was, it wasn't cheap frame, but it was cheaper than um, going to a framers and doing it. And it was a really nice frame. So, this is And To All A Good Night by Blackbird Designs. And it's finished in this kind of ebonized sort of antique frame. And look, it's even got a back on it. Check me out. <laughs> Most of my things that you can sort of see up here are missing backs and things like that, just because I haven't put them on yet. But this has got a back on it. And I stitched it in colours that I thought were similar to the front, um, maybe slightly darker, just because this is a quite an old pattern, I can't recall which year it's from, and so I figured that even if I had bought the threads, they probably wouldn't be the same colours as were on the front. Um, and so I just picked something, colours that I thought were nice. The house mostly is a silks for you but I can't remember what colour it might have even been a silks for you what they call a solo 
um, sometimes they'll sell off um, like a pack of 10, um, 15 meters that are solo. So they haven't quite died as they had expected or they're trying a new recipe or something like that. So it might even be one of those. Um, I know that the roof is tin roof and then the rest is just bits and bobs. There should have been another couple of sort of stitches up here, but I think they were queen stitches or rice stitches. I can't remember which. And I, I didn't make a good success of them, so I left them off. <laughs> But yeah, I'm really, really delighted with it. It's stitched on a 30 count something. It's an R&R &R fabric. But I'd have to check my records. I'm, I might have a look and check and I'll write it down underneath. But yeah, so I'm super pleased with that. Before I move on, just a quick reminder, if you're going to any retreats this, this autumn, you might want to get yourself a hoodie or something like that. Um, I've got a tea mills shop where you can get hoodies and t-shirts that say things like classy stitcher and stitcher and um, you can choose whether you are team stitch along or st team start along. So the link for that is down below. So if you're looking for any kind of stitchy, stitchy comfy wear for the, uh, the as the nights draw in, then you might want to have a look on that. Right, now. Now, 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 I'm going to introduce you to somebody new. Um, she's the biggest sampler I've ever bought. She's stitched in wool, so that's that's not too bad. It's not like it's a giant, tiny stitch sampler. <laughs> she's just a big sampler. She's a Welsh sampler. Um, and you may recognise her because I think quite a few people watched her sell on eBay. Um, and I was pretty determined that she was going to stay in Wales. So I'm going to introduce you to her. You can see the top corner of her here and she arrived in this massive frame. Now the frame itself is not, it's just a big frame, it's not that brilliant, um, but the stitching I think is, is beautiful and there's quite a story that's beginning to unfold with her as well. So. Oh my goodness me. Right, first of all, you're gonna see in the reflection a room that looks like there's been a struggle, okay? That is my style of housekeeping sometimes. There has been a struggle. Um, so yeah, just look at the sampler, ignore the rest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose you for a minute completely while I just hold her up. Oh. Did you get a good look? Did you get a good look? So the first thing that we want to talk about, and I'm gonna rest her on my toes, is that this is stitched by Anne Davis, who was 12 years old in 1852, which is when she stitched this. And the thing that attracted me was the border. I absolutely love that border of, let's see if I can, I am sat on a squeaky seat as well, all right? Just so you know, um, of kind of, I'm not sure whether they're supposed to be roses or even pa um, poppies, because there is a Welsh poppy. It's not that color, but there is a Welsh poppy. So they are highly variegated, highly striped. And then you've got the verse there which I'll have to put down in a minute to read to you. This very very striking house and some other sampler motifs and it says, I have to put it down, and it says underneath Nant Gurid and it actually says Nant Gurid Isa underneath I think. I think it might be Isa. Um, now, the, the, I'm going to read you the, the passage. It says, One thing have I desired of the Lord that will, I, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to, be, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. So, you guys know that scripture is not my 
my thing to read or to sort of um, pick for myself. But what's really interesting about this is she's going on about the house. Obviously, it's the house of the Lord. But that house is a very, very distinctive house. And I found it. I know where it is. So let me tell you a little bit about her. So this is, as I said, Anne Davis. She was born in 1840. And the really odd thing about this story is that when I went to see Chris at the Nimble Thimble last week or the week before, whenever it was, I'd, I went to see Chris on the Wednesday and I bought her on the Tuesday night. And I'd managed to find her in the records because I was looking up Nant Gurid and I knew Nant Gurid was somewhere up near, not far from Chris's shop. It's sort of between Oswestry, Langochlan, slightly to the south of both. So I knew it wasn't that far away from Chris's shop. And when I um, was leaving, I told her about this really convoluted way that I'd arrived at the shop. And she's like, no, 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 no. What you want to do is you want to go straight up the road to the, the next village, turn right, go down that road to the next village, turn right again, and then you're on the main road that runs through the middle of Wales. Now, when I say main road that runs through the middle of Wales, we're still not thinking even dual carriageway. We're still thinking single carriageway. But the village that I had to turn right at is called Clan Sam Fright. Anne was baptised in Clan Sam Fried. So literally three or four days before I'd got her, unknowingly I'd been in the village, driven through the village that she was baptised in, which is absolutely incredible. So what I did was I put onto, I, I looked at where Nant Gurid was and it's not really a village, it's kind of an area in a valley, I, I think you would probably say, um, with some villages close by. And so what I did was I looked on Facebook to see if any of those villages had like a community group or a Facebook group for their for their village. And I found one and it's for the Kerryog, I think it's the Kerryog Valley, um, which covers several of these sort of little small holdings, groups of houses, hamlets, whatever you want to call them, um, as well as some bigger places. And so I popped her onto there and a lovely lady called Alma messaged me and she said, I think I know that house. Um, and so she showed me a picture roughly of it. Um, and it's one of three. Well, there's three houses and it's one of two. But since then, I was contacted by a lovely man called Gareth. And he said, I think she's my great grandmother. And so I spoke to him on the phone and then I spoke to his cousin who Anne would also be his great grandmother and yes yeah, so I've managed to speak to two of her great grandsons on the phone um, which is really really lovely. So I'm going to try and narrow down which of the two houses it is. Um, her great grandson thinks it's one house and this other lady thinks it's the other house of this pair um, so we'll get some more photos and try and, and try and work out bear in mind I'm sort of having these conversations on the phone with with these two gentlemen these two lovely gentlemen that I've not met and trying to determine between two different houses that I've never seen either <laughs> so it could be that we're talking about the same house and once we get a picture we'll 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 work it out but his daughter so her great great granddaughter either lives in this house or the one next to it. So it's still in the family, which is amazing. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Anne. And I'm gonna to have to look at my notes because there's so many children. <laughs> so Anne was born in 1840 and she died in 1915. She married in 1862, Edward Rogers. And they had Robert, Jonathan, Edward, Elizabeth, David, Anne, Richard and Thomas. Now the two great grandsons that I spoke to are through Thomas, through the youngest of her children. And one of the, the great grandsons, Donald, told me um, about 
one of her other sons, so Jonathan Rogers. Now, if you live in Vancouver, the name Jonathan Rogers probably will mean more to you than it will in other parts of the world, because he travelled to Vancouver, he went to live in Vancouver, and he was um, one of the people responsible for Stanley Park in Vancouver. And I believe there is actually either a separate park or part of Stanley Park, which is called Jonathan Rogers Park. So it is the same Jonathan Rogers that you might be familiar with if you know the Vancouver area well. Um, so, so excited, so excited to have another Welsh sampler to keep a Welsh sampler in Wales. I have no clue where I'm going to put it. It probably is about a metre by a metre in its frame. So it's even bigger than Phoebe Griffiths, who is behind there somewhere, um, who was the other Welsh sampler that I had with the bird. And it's bigger than the Welsh sampler with the windmill, which a lot of people keep poking me about and saying, have you done that? Have you charted the windmill yet? Um, now, when I saw this, obviously it was the border that I loved. And I've done a little bit of working out because obviously what we would love is if there was a variegated thread that would allow us to just stitch the border without having to um, chart independently all of those DMCs. And I think there may be, I think there may be. I went to Hobbycraft on my way home from St Fagans the other day. We went to St Fagans, which is like a life um, Welsh history museum. It's one of those ones where they take old buildings and then they rebuild them and you can go and look around. We didn't get, I think we probably got half of it done. It's massive and it's free to get into. So if you're ever in just outside Cardiff, it's brilliant. So according to Hobbycraft. And I picked up definitely anchor not anchor sorry dmc 115 because that definitely covers us for some of the darker shades and i picked up also 107 which has got some of the pinker ones in it but i think actually looking at what's left of my dmc chart and you know i chopped it up last week what we really need is these two here because she goes into some very very pale pinks almost cream so i think what i need to get hold of is the 115 and also the 99 because they give us a continuous shade all the way through so I've got the 115 and I'll order um, the 99. And then in between, and I'm not going to lift her up again, but in between there are leaves which are done in exactly the same fashion. And there are two greens that I picked up. Um, and it's going to be, I just, I haven't looked at the greens as closely. It's going to be either 92 or 94. It's going to be either 92 or 94. Now, the reason that I'm looking at DMC um, rather than a hand-dyed thread is because the DMC tends to have a quicker change in colour than the hand-dyed threads. The hand-dyed threads tend to give you um, that variation over more stitches and as you can see and again I'm not going to lift her up but as you can see you've probably got about eight or nine stitches in that very dark colour before it then moves on so it does need to be quite a quite a variegated thread um, and I think the DMC which is amazing if it'll work will be fantastic for stitching that border um, and then you've got the beautiful blues and the reds in the house and she's just phenomenal she's just phenomenal so um yeah these sort of smaller welsh cottages and they do these big samplers <laughs> right i'll leave her i'll leave her there for now but she's beautiful okay so who won last week's giveaways then 
also I had two sets of pins to give away from um, Jersey Girl Stitch Co. She'd sent me a pack of the red. Uh, come on, out we come. So a pack of the red, and you guys absolutely loved, 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 loved these last week. So the red goes to Christine Croson. Sorry, as I said, I've got it written, a thing written down below, otherwise I'll never remember. So the red goes to Christine Croson, and I'm not going to take the blue out, but the blue is going to Lorraine Buick, I think. So I will comment on your comment. If you could send me a message either on Instagram or on uh, by email and um, with your postal address and I will pop these in the post to you. The other postal um, charts that I had to post out from last week, they've gone to the post office, um, but they won't be going till Monday. So I missed the, missed the post this weekend. It wasn't ideal. <laughs> just wanted to remind you of this stitch along that I'm starting on the 15th of December with, um, there you go, I wrote it down on the side, uh, Cross Stitch Sarah um, and Yasmin's Made With Love and it is the uh, Rockin' Robin by Love Poppet and I'll come right back here because I haven't got the cover photo so I'm going to be starting that on the 15th. What else have I got to show you? I had a parcel. I had a parcel from Jean at the attic. Now, you might remember, oh, a month or so ago now, that I had said, whoops, that I was very keen or would very much like to get my hands on a copy of this book. Um, this is called Imitation and Improvement, the Norfolk Sampler Tradition by Joanne Martin Lukacha. And Jean very kindly messaged me and said that she had a copy for sale um, and gave me a price, which was a fabulous price. Um, really, really happy with it. Um, it only came the other day, so I've not had a chance to really look through the book yet. But there's a chart. I would never have known that if it hadn't fallen out. Wait, wait a minute, we'll get to that. So. There is all of these beautiful samplers that have a lot of them, that classic Norfolk stepped lozenge in them. Whoops. Very much like our Susanna. Now I'm going to get her in a minute. But I'm going to have a look and see what fell out first of all. So this is not a reproduction, but rather an original design by In the Company of Friends in the Norfolk Sampler tradition. Oh, marvellous. OK. OK, there we go. So that's what it is. How fabulous is that? I would never have known that if I hadn't fallen that well. I would have I would have got to it eventually, wouldn't I? I would have got to it eventually. Love that. Although it does look as if it's got a lot of free stitching on it we'll see about that so yeah I cannot wait to get looking at that now the other thing that I asked Jean about was what did she think let's just grab her because she's very delicate and I want to get her back in her frame as soon as possible um what did she think about a linen because I think this has got a hint of a yellow to it and when I I want to stitch on 36 count because that's that's my jam I'm doing the model it's my jam um, she is still gonna be oh, I'm gonna touch it too much stay. she's still gonna be I think just over a, f a fat quarter so I sent Jean the DMC list. Now, I don't think the DMC is exhaustive, but I think it's the main 
the main ones. Here we go. So, the main ones. The only one I'm not so sure about is that green. But the green on the sampler is very prominent. Um, both front and back. So I can see the back a little bit. There's, there's a little hole um, where she's come away from the um, fabric that she's sewn onto. Um, if you didn't hear me talk about her before, uh, it's on a very, very tiny count. I think I, I think I remember counting her to 56 count, maybe. Either 46 or 56 count, I can't remember. Um, and the stitches that hold the sampler onto the back fabric are so tiny and the fabric is so uh, delicate that I think if I tried to, to take her off, it would just be catastrophic. I'm sure it could be done by somebody with more skill with antique samplers than, than me and maybe something to look at in the future, but at the moment she's safer on there than she is um, off. So those are the, the colours, quite classic Norfolk colours really. And Jean sent me a couple of choices and I went with this one, which is um, Lakeside Vintage Buttercream. So I've got a, a fat half of Lakeside Vintage Buttercream. And those, just see if I can put them on there. Those are the threads. They do all show up on there. Some of them do what they do on that fabric, which is kind of ghost a little bit, but it was a brilliant, brilliant choice of fabric. So thank you so much, Jean, for helping me out um, with that and using your, your expert knowledge to get the right fabric um, with those DMCs and for helping me to source that book, which I just can't wait to dive into. Put that all the way and keep it clean. Two or three other things that I want to talk about. I've got another couple of samplers to show you, not mine. Another couple of beautiful um, samplers and another drum from Crow's Feet. And uh, Ruthie said I can give away one of each of her patterns as well. So I'll show you those in a minute. But if you are on Instagram, you may have seen this lady, this Mrs Fisher Stitches, Elizabeth, um, and she put up a note saying that she's um, studying for an undergraduate psychology um, degree at the University of Buckingham. And for her final year project, she is investigating whether um, cross-stitch has an impact on well-being. Um, I definitely think it does. <laughs> I think there'd be a lot of people who would have died if, if I hadn't been able to stitch. Um, and basically she's asking if folks can complete an on anonymous survey. Um, so what I'll do is I will either, oh no, I've got the direct link, so I'll put the direct link for the survey underneath. So if you wouldn't mind just going on and completing the survey, um, that would be that would be fabulous. I've got all respect for, for people who, cr who um, go on to university. You know, I went straight from school, that was easy. I didn't have children, anything else to worry about then. That was easy. It was still hard work, but it was like, going now. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would be so difficult. So immense respect to anybody who is at university um, slightly later in their life, shall we say, rather than going straight through at 21, because yeah, that was a breeze compared to, <laughs> I can't even find time to like have a pee in peace, quite frankly, sometimes. Right, let's have a look. I've got a freebie as well here to do. I've, I've still got stuff, I've still got stuff to show you. So let's have a look at these amazing samplers. So there are three charts and Ruthie said I could give away one of each. So I'm gonna start off with this one now. If there's ever a sampler that you wished you owned or that you wished you reproduced, this would be one for me. Flora McClulloch, no, McClulloch, yeah, I've said that right, I think, from Kilbride. Look at that sampler, look at that, August the 1st, 1846. 
Um, now, as with all of Ru uh, Ruthie's patterns, you get a comprehensive family history where she can find it, links to um, places where you can find out more information. You get lots and lots of pictures of the actual sampler, what it looked like on the front, the back, how to stitch up close-up pictures of how to stitch up certain elements, how to do certain stitches, and the colours, obviously. And you also get a colour chart. There we go. So, if you would like to win a copy of this one, let's say Flora for that one. Let's go with Flora. I love that. Love, love, love. The second sampler is Christian Dogood. That's how I would pronounce it. You can shout shout me down and tell me how to pronounce it. Which is 1844 or 1845, so about the same period. And this one, um, it is a girl. Um, even though the name Christian might suggest that you may think boy, but it, it was stitched by a girl. And it gives um, all of her information. This is another Scottish one. Um, 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 um. Very, very similar layout. Again, you get lots of information about how to stitch things, about how to do the eyelets, the back stitches, and then the chart. So if you would like this one, let's go with Peacock for this one. So if you'd like a copy of this chart, this is by PDF. All these charts are by PDF, so they can go anywhere in the world. So PDF chart there. And then she has also taken, yeah, it is, some of the motifs from the bottom of this one and turned it into another one of her fabulous drums. So if you would like to stitch the drum, then if you can put the word drum, then I will have a look at that probably in two weeks time. The reason I say two weeks time is I'm thinking I may take a week's break next week. Um, just because we're going back to school on Friday, um, I'll no doubt have so much stuff to do next weekend. Um, and I probably won't be doing as much stitching this week. I did a lot last week because I was like, right, this is all gonna change soon. Life is gonna go back to busy, busy teaching. So I sort of really got stuck into my, my stitching this week. Um, so I may take a week's break next week, just to, and I haven't got to worry about whether I've got stuff to show you or, you know, finding the time to, to do the floss tube because, I know there's still a few things hanging over from last year that need to be sorted. So, yeah. So, we'll see. If, we, if you get one next week, count it as a bonus. <laughs> Flora for that one. Drum for that one. Peacock for that one. So as I said, you can enter for all three if you want to. Just use those keywords and then next week I will pick out a winner for each one and I will email the charts over to you or I'll get Ruthie to email them over, more than likely. Right, what else have we been doing this week? <laughs> this. I found this. So let me just take all of these out. I found this in a charity shop for £2.50. It's the tray that matches my... Well, I've got it as a scissor holder. It's a flower frog, obviously, but I've got it as a scissor holder. And then I fancied making some of these. <laughs> so I made a few. <laughs> and I, well, I'll show you these two first. I didn't make, oh, well, I did make these, but not recently. But when I was going back through all my bits and bobs where I used to make for sale these um, thread keeps or ring bling, whatever you want to call them, um, I also used to make some scissor fobs. And these are two that I didn't sell for some reason or hadn't, put, hadn't listed yet. So I should be putting those on my, on some scissors. 
And then I made all of these in the space of about 20 minutes. <laughs> so these are black book rings. Although I think on Amazon, these ones were listed as metal shower curtain rings. It's exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing. And I went on to Etsy and I found some of these, they are called, um, I will search for one inch circle collage pages. Sometimes they're called bottle caps, bottle cap designs, but you basically get a page of them that you can print. And then if you want to know how to make them, I have got a special edition floss tube, which I will link down below. Um, another insight into my life, I've got to go to the tip tomorrow morning. So I probably won't be doing my notes until about lunchtime. So bear with. Um, I ordered the cabochons, which are these bits at the bottom from Amazon as well. So everything came from Amazon. So let me show you what I made. I made a Charles Darwin one. I do have a tattoo of Charles Darwin on my back, so I thought I had to have that one. I did another scientist one. Um, where is he? Isaac. Isaac Newton. Or if you're in, your, if you're in Wales, Isaac Newton. There we go. I did three... Oh no, I did two. I had two ones which had eyeballs on them so I just made those up as well um, I did three which were quilt patterns now some of these I just need to rub over some acetone because the glue that I use sometimes you get um, you can't see it at the time, but you get a little bit on the surface of the glass and it looks a little bit cloudy. I just need to rub them over with a little bit of acetone and it will be fine. So if you see a little bit of cloudiness on the knee, then that's all it is. It's just a little bit of glue mess that I just need to use up. So those are the three quilt design ones. And I did three, three William Morris ones as well. Or did I only do two? No, three. Yeah, that one's got a bit of a cloud. It's just where I've touched the glass surface with my fingers, which no doubt had super glue on them at the same time. So three William Morris ones. And then I did five Christmas ones. Yeah, these. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Where's the fifth one? There. And I did five Halloween ones as well, which are my my favourites. I've got quite a few Halloween projects, and again, yeah, I just need to put some acetone over those. So what have we got? A little witch with her cat and her pumpkin. Two little witches at the table. Black cat in his hat. A crow. And a little cat sat in a pumpkin. Now, when you buy those design packs from Etsy, because I only want those for my own use, it, it's fine. But if you wanted to make them to sell, you just have to make sure that the um, seller of the images is happy for you to use those images for personal and commercial use. Some of them say that you have to purchase a separate license if you want to use them for commercial purposes. Um, some of them don't. Some of them will say like small scale production is fine, um, but not, not large scale production. What they would call small and large, I don't know, you'd have to check with the seller. But some of them just say, use for whatever purpose some of them say personal use only or small scale commercial so um, if you want to make some of those have a look on my tutorial as I said it's so easy honestly it took me about 10 minutes to make to make a load of them right let me show you what else I've got and then we'll be we'll be getting close to an hour today 
What else did I purchase? Ah. I did phone Chris from the Nimble Thimble and get her to, um, I ordered, I was gonna say get her to send me, I ordered it obviously, um, Welcome Winter. I had accidentally purchased Welcome Christmas while I was there and I was getting so many comments through saying, oh, we didn't know that the Nimble Thimble did those drawn thread kits with the lovely silks. And I was like, it's gonna be sold out. It's gonna be sold out. I've done this to myself before. I've said, oh, I think I'd like that. And um, and then I go to buy it. And then, cause I've told you guys about it, it's not there anymore. <laughs> so I did get that one. And I also got Home Sweet Home because Chris has free postage over 30 pounds, I think. I really like that. I saw Brenda had stitched that one and I saw that she'd got her her um, small back from Joy and it looked lovely. Picked up that one, just on Stash Unload. That is called um, So Happy by All Through the Night. It's just a, one of those kind of cool birds sat on a pumpkin. That's not a pumpkin, that's a tomato. Um, I don't know. Cotton reel. I've lost the plot now. Um, Oh, these are just two little silly things. I picked these up in the works because they were on sale for two pounds and I thought, oh, super easy for keeping threads in. And they had a separate little pouch on the front for scissors and things like that. So just a couple of mesh pouches. And then also in Hobbycraft, I bought a bat which I have put some um, paper on again I downloaded it I bought the, the paper pack off Etsy downloaded it stuck it on and I thought that that would make quite a nice hanger for something I'll probably put another piece on the back when I get around to it so yeah they were about two quid just the plain bats and they were also selling these which is obviously a Halloween thing but I thought actually a finish in the middle there and that wouldn't have to be Halloween at all. So those lovely mason jar um, stitches and things like that, I thought would look really cool on there. What else did I get? Oh, I couldn't resist this. We went to the local reservoir, Lisa Fran, and I'm a terrible one for, for tins. And so I'm gonna keep this in my handbag with a pair of scissors and a little pack of needles in it because every time I take a stitchy project, even though I keep a needle in every project, you can bet your bottom dollar the one that I pick either hasn't got a needle or it hasn't got scissors in it. So I'm going to use that to keep in there. And I haven't done the freebie. Last thing. This is the freebie. It's a Day of the Dead pattern by um, DMC. And obviously, it's meant so that you can use them kind of individually. It's not meant to stitch like that, unless you particularly want to, but you know, to pick pairs of things or those, that row, that row, individual things. But I thought they'd be just a nice little Day of the Dead um, stitch. So I'll put the link to that. You get a black and white chart for that one. You do have to put your email in for that one um, so that they send you their newsletter but it is a freebie chat. I'm gonna finish there. I've waffled on enough. Um, if I see you next week I see you. If I don't then it will be the following week when we're back full into school, full into September and we'll be heading down to autumn, Halloween and Christmas which is obviously the best part of the year. I'll see you soon. Stay classy Stitchers!